the long weekend is over now in the nation that enriches children by machine gunning them to death. It was a weekend when we saw photographs of a man being thrown out of a high-flying helicopter for the terrible crime of refusing to talk to foreign soldiers. I suppose he would be a hero if his people knew his name, or if there were much left of him after his body splattered into the earth in which he was born. To our brave emissaries, the men who threw him to his death, he was just a dink, a gook, a slope. It didn't matter. Let's get on to the next Hamlet, boys. We've got some four-year-old Viet Cong sympathizers to enrich. We're going to give them the American way at 17 rounds a clip. Is there any greater measure of how mangled and abstract this country has become than that the war has lasted all these days since the revelations about Songmi? If we were a civilized people, if we were even a people who had remained true to our origins, that single incident would have been enough to end it. The people who started this country were brave men. They did not shoot four-year-old girls. And yet there is Nixon, hiding in Florida, or cruising with an industrialist in the Bahamas, or having senior citizens over to the White House for Thanksgiving dinner, just as if nothing had happened to us. Nixon, that prince of the 1950s, taking those old people before the cameras as if that act alone could restore some self-image that involves continuity. Did they read the Saturday Evening Post while waiting to eat? Did they tell Nixon about the terrible winter of 88 and how Tad Dorgan was still drawing cartoons for the American and how they had framed those drawings by John Tenney McCutcheon from the Chicago Tribune, showing the seasons changing in the farmlands and boys walking along roads barefoot with weeds dangling from their mouths. Poor lost America. Clean, honorable, decent, even naive now wallowing in the obscene slime of Asia. In the 50s, the Republicans got away with everything because they had a war hero heading the cast. Now we're paying for all of it. It was Eisenhower who made Nixon respectable, who kept him on after the Checkers speech who did not interfere with his shouts of treason against men like George Marshall and Adlai Stevenson. And it was Eisenhower who allowed John Foster Dulles to indulge his missionary brand of foreign policy, entangling us in a web of alliances with criminals, murderers, dictators, and worse, just as long as they were anti-communist. And it was Eisenhower who canceled the 1956 elections in Vietnam, which would have united the country, because in a free election, Ho Chi Minh would have won. We broke laws in the 1950s. We shook off morality and stood behind force and started building our smug and terrible facade. We're paying for it now. Eisenhower's great crusade ends up with men throwing Orientals out of helicopters. An American has the right to wonder what it must take to move the men who now run this country. Nixon went on TV to tell about the communist massacres in Way. Massacres that cannot be justified even though they were committed by Vietnamese against Vietnamese in their own country. He sends only his press secretary to talk about Song Mi, and then comes up with a press relations gambit on biological warfare. 
We will not use any gas, he says, except that gas we are already using in Vietnam. Net immediate gain for the human race, zero. Net gain in the next telephone poll conducted by the Republican National Committee in Iowa, probably plenty. Just once, I wish George Gallup would poll the people of the Mekong Delta. The terrible thing about all this is that Lieutenant Cowley, who was just another digit in a military system that has been morally corrupted by its size, poor dumb Cowley, will be court-martialed and the others will be free. We can expect soon a long and philosophical TV interview with Lyndon Johnson on the ranch. Arthur Goldberg, who had to defend Johnson in the UN, will run for governor. Walt Rustow, Dean Rusk, Robert McNamara will write memoirs. Callie will go to jail. The point, of course, is that nothing meaningful happens. We assembled a half million Americans in Washington to protest the war, and nothing happens. We are exposed in Song Mi, and nothing happens. We try to go on with tables loaded down by food on Thanksgiving Day, and the Raiders beating the Jets on Sunday, and when we get up from the table, blood is still slopping around the earth of Asia. On Thanksgiving Day, in my parents' house in Bay Ridge, I sat for a while and watched my five-year-old daughter playing in the other room and could only give small thanks that she wasn't Vietnamese. It's not much to give thanks for, but if she were a kid in Vietnam, the chances are rather large that once decent kids from up my block might blow her head off. <laughs>